So let's talk about website filtering with PF Sense and PF Blocker. Now I've done a previous video on PF Blocker, but I focused on the blocking side, as in, so if you open ports, you only want certain websites or certain people to be able to get to those ports and block out lots of other things banging away at the ports. An example of this would be you open up, let's say, SSH, and you don't want everyone trying to SSH in, so you can use the PF blocker list to stop some of the lists of people that's blocking from the outside in. There's another use for PF Blocker, and I don't think I really touched on it uh, in that video, but I'll link to that previous video. And this video was more focused on filtering content and filtering via DNS on the outgoing side. So the people behind the firewall, making sure that they don't go to websites they shouldn't go to, blacklisting websites, and setting up the controls for that. Now I've done a video before on this with DNS thingy, which is kind of cool because it's a nice turnkey solution with a paid subscription that will allow you to block on a computer by computer basis. There's an, other companies out there that do things like this. DNS thingy just happens to have integration with PFSense and I covered it, it's a pretty neat service. Now. The lists I'm gonna share with you are a lot of open lists. I have them up here in the tabs and we'll be covering those and the links will all be in the description below. And that is a one thing about the paid versus the non-paid ones. A lot of times what you're actually paying for isn't just something that you can say, well, I can do the same thing over here for free. You're paying for these updated lists. Uh, the lists are only as, the blocking is only as good as those lists are maintained. And when those lists are being maintained on a paid service versus a free service, you may have some discrepancies. Now, that being said, you can customize and you can decide to maintain your own list if you want. And all of this is pretty open and we're just gonna talk about how this is all done. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I wanted to quickly address, everyone says, Tom, why not SquidGuard? Why are you doing it with DNS? The reason for DNS filtering is this part right here. And you can Google this, it's actually a top result for setting up SquidGuard with man in the middle. And this is the part everyone gets stuck on and it's a pain and it doesn't work with my phone. It doesn't work with IoT devices. It's the man in the middle interception. When you're trying to actually filter at the URL level, most sites, well, I can't say most, but a lot of sites have moved to SSL, which is encrypted. So if it's encrypted, Squid can't play man in the middle and filter the websites based on some contextual information you put in there. That being said, you have to install and create a trust certificate for each computer to trust the PFSense so they can do that. And yes, you can do that, and no, I'm not gonna make a tutorial on it because I don't do that because it breaks too many things. And if you're curious, I'll leave, I will leave a link to this, the draft for the new TLS 1.3 and the problem it creates because of the way they're doing the security, it breaks even with man in the middle because the goal in some of the function changes from TLS 1.2 to 1.3 is better security between your computer and whichever computer or server is trying to talk to. Because of that, man in the middle becomes an even bigger problem. So I'm not a big fan of having to do man in the middle and install certificates. They do it a lot in corporate networks and a lot of the corporate antivirus or filtering boxes that do all this, do those functions. And, but it can cause a lot of trouble. It can be a lot more to maintain. DNS filtering, much easier to maintain at this time here in 2018. It filters the DNS. Now, we're gonna talk about how to set this up and how to get it going, and it's not that hard to do. And like I said, it's my preferred method for doing it. Let's start with PFSense. So we got our lab box here, all set up and configured. And I'm gonna jump over first to the firewall rules because I made two rules that are important to this. Especially if you're someone running this for a small business or a school, uh, because we want PFSense to be the default DNS server or an internal server you're using if you're if you're on a Windows domain has to be the default DNS server. You don't want external DNS servers to be used. That's the important part. So we're gonna go over here to rules and LAN rules, apply this to which all the LANs that this is important for. Now rules go in order from top down. So we're gonna look at here, this LAN net rule that says, and we'll, I'll go, I'll just go ahead and edit it. Pass traffic from LAN, IPv4 traffic, protocol UDP, source, wherever it is in your LAN, destination, LAN net, which falls on servers within your LAN, so we're not blocking them, 53 DNS, and this is allow. And now we're saying any, and this is basically allow port 53 requests 
uh, via UDP to land on the network, the LAN net as a destination, which includes the PF sense box because it's in the LAN. Then the next rule is if it doesn't match landing on the LAN net, block it. So that's this rule. Default action block, interface LAN, IP4, UDP. So the same rule essentially. Source LAN net, so if it comes from the LAN, destination anywhere. Now, if it matches the first rule, that's it, it stopped, it passed. But if you try to use a DNS server outside of the LAN, it's going to fail. So if they try to use another public DNS server, it's going to fail. Now, the one sort of exception to this, just so you know, is Android, and I don't know if it's just Google Chrome, but Google Chrome does proxy its own DNS, so it doesn't really work as well, I believe, for some of the ad blocking inside of Chrome in Android because it's proxying DNS over their own Google protocols for that. Well, I'm, they're using open protocols, but Google's doing that. So someone asked that before, and I just wanted to throw that out there. That could be an issue for you. But inside of the different apps, if the phone is on the LAN and you have this enabled, it will block things inside of their malware sites and stuff like that. So things that are the apps itself may be going out to can be blocked. Just a little side note there. But because you're not installing any certificates, uh, all of the other devices, if they try to use any external uh, DNS tablets or other laptops or computers, they're not going to be able to with that rule. So let's get started here on the installing this. Available packages, PF block, real simple install. Just like it installs like any other package. All right, so the package is installed. It does take a while. So depending on the speed of your machine, this can take a little while to install it because it is a pretty good size package and it has a few dependencies it loads with it. Once it's installed, we're gonna go over here to firewall, PF blocker NG. We're gonna go ahead and enable it hit save. I'm gonna leave everything at default. Now, from here, you can go watch my other tutorials I mentioned before on all the other features you're gonna see up here. We're focusing specifically on using it for the uh, DNSN BL blocking. So this is the focus right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn this on, enable DNS BL. We're not gonna worry about this feature here. This is something important the DNSPL virtual IP. So the way the domain name service blocking works is it's going to redirect a domain that has an ad server or whatever you're trying to block to whatever IP address you put in. It's gonna run its own special web server. But if you happen to be here in the US, this is the default IP address of Comcast routers. So that may or may not work for you uh, to do that. You want this to be an IP outside of your normal range, adjust this accordingly. Uh, some Comcast routers, I think, well, they're 10.1.10.1, uh, but make sure this isn't in a range that you've chosen. That's the most important part. Uh, so double check that, try to ping it before you turn it on, because it's gonna create a web server there and it just forces everything there. Now, so we're gonna go enable, leave this at default, because that works perfectly fine. Leave this here, leave all these things at default, no problems here. And this as well, we'll just leave at default. Now we only have uh, one LAN on this. If you have multiple, like I do on my main system, you check this and you can create rules. So actually, let me drag a window over here. It'll allow you to create rules for all the different LANs that you have. Uh, so if, if that's an issue for you, you can check that and it'll create the rules. Uh, it just creates more floating rules. So all this is done and we're gonna hit save. All right. Now we've set this up, we've set, saved it, we've turned it on. Then it's going to be using the default DNS server inside of PFSense here. Now comes the fun part. We have to feed this information to tell it what to block. The default out of the boxes, block nothing. They do build in the easy list if you wanted to turn these on, so this is an option in here. Uh, but we're gonna focus on loading the pie hole ones uh, because I have that list, it's easy to do, and we're talking about doing something custom here. So let me just slide this over here and I'll leave a link to this. This is the uh, ones on the pie hole and there's Steven's blacklist. Now this is the more extensive list and let me just shuffle things around over here. 
This is the more extensive list where you uh, have a lot of them, for example, to block gambling, porn, social, fake news. Uh, but you gotta remember when you're doing this, you're choosing these lists maintained by, uh, well, Steve. <laughs> so I'll leave a link to this as well. So this will get you, like if you wanna block all the uh, social sites and things like that, and I'll show you some of what that looks like. It's actually just a raw file to block all the sites. But we're gonna start with just the pie hole ones to keep it simple and easy to do. So here's the list of them here and we can just go and paste them in. So here's some malware domains. We're gonna go over here to our PFSense box. We're gonna add, and I'm gonna call this group, first you give it a group name, pie hole list. Uh, no space is allowed. You can put in the description, the list, the sites from pie hole. And if you're not familiar with the Pi Hole project, it's the concept to run this on a uh, small server in your house, perhaps even a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I've set this up and tested it, it works well. I'm doing this demo with PFSense, but you can run separately a uh, outside server and run the Pi Hole software. That's a tutorial I might do in the future because it's kind of a fun little project. I've set it up, I've tested it at home, it works, it gives a cool dashboard for all this. Uh, I will do that in a future video. But today we're covering this. So we paste the source in here, it needs a label. So this label is the malware blocks. So there's our malware one and we're gonna add a few of them. So we go that where we got the malware block. I'm not sure what these ones are. What are the chameleon hosts? Looks like more advertising domains. We'll throw them in there. Uh, what did it say? I'm gonna put the same label on it. You don't have to, I just, for labeling purpose, I wanna call it the same thing. Go to the next one. The Zeus Tracker. And if you're not familiar with uh, Zeus Tracker, it's another one. List of uh, different fake bad URLs for things and they've got a whole uh, way it works. You can look some of these up and they tell you how they come up with some of these lists. These these are pretty much all open source lists uh, that they have in here. This is a cool one. This is the uh, tracking ones. So we'll do this, add. All right, now let's go get the next one. Here are the ad, there's the big one, the ad list. And there's another one from host file net. So we'll throw that one in there too. Host net. Now, list action, unbound. What that means is enable domain name blocking for this alias. So you wanna make sure you've done this. Update frequency, don't beat up these servers. Uh, uh, if you really think you need more, go ahead, but I'm saying maybe once a day, every 12 hours should be pretty good. If you feel it isn't easy, more aggressive, go ahead and do that. But uh, you are pulling data from all these servers, your system's going out and grabbing all these on whatever the definition you have here is. So we'll go ahead and save. But you're probably thinking, Tom, I don't want to wait 12 hours to get this list updated. Oh, no problem. Uh, go over here to update, and we're going to force run this. And it's downloading all the lists. And away we go. Now, it tells you the time remaining, next scheduled event. So time remaining then, so this is, it, it creates a cron job automatically. So it tells you the frequency in the next time update based on the rules that you set here for update frequencies in the feed. So here's our pie hole list. If we wanna edit it again, here's the sites we had in here. We can add or remove them, turn them on or off, or delete them back out of this list. So all that's pretty straightforward. Now let's talk about the effectiveness of this. So let's pull up a list in here. So here's all the ads that are being blocked. Let's find one that's just a simple one. Was it, uh, and it should, let's see if it works. Okay, I have my system set to this and what it's doing here is it just 
changes to a pixel. This is not actually the site uh, there. So what happens is this site, because we're using the DNS and we're filtering it, it brings it and redirected this site to an internal single pixel. Back to that right there. If you can see the one by one, you can see that it's, I believe you can inspect it here. There we go. It is now essentially blocked. It's just a single pixel that's being pulled in here for adspeed.net. And this is what the PF the PF blocker is doing is it created that server, it created it that 10.10.1, and now we just get a one by one pixel. That means when we go to different websites, we'll end up with that one pixel being replaced with whatever ad they were gonna serve up. So let's go over here and I have my Windows machine and you can kind of see some of this in action. And we'll uh, zoom in here, let me clear this. There we go. Sometimes I forget I'm not in Linux. Jumping back and forth to Windows. We'll zoom in, make it easier to see. We're gonna do an NS lookup. Oops. All right, by default, it wants to go to our PFSense lab domain. So we look up and we'll just use that same one, you know, at speed.net, and you can see it resolves to 10.10.10.1, simple as that. Now, the other thing you can't do here, so we specify server 8.8.8.8. .8 we recognize that it's the Google public domain server, but if we try to do that same thing, it's not allowed to talk to it because of the rule we put in. So now this system has that site blocked. Now let's go a step further and talk about blocking something like social networks. So if we go over here and maybe you wanna block uh, gambling, porn, and social, seems reasonable enough. And this is where we come to this uh, Steve's custom list. And I'm feeling positive the big names are in here and well, porn hub. Dot com. Yeah, Pornhub is definitely in this list. So let's add this list to our server. We can add it to the pie hole list or we can create our own. So we'll just call this the porn blocks. And I guess we'll block right. Porn blocking. Blocking some porn. There's our source, Steve porn list. So we know what it is, it's actually porn and gambling. So I guess it should be the porn gambling list. All right, list action, unbound, same as before, update frequency. I'm 12 hours is probably fine. Save. All right, so now we have the porn list uh, in here. It's blocked, but it hasn't updated yet. 12 hours hasn't occurred, so we're gonna go over here to update. It's got nine minutes. I don't feel like waiting nine minutes. I'm gonna force now. We're gonna just force the update. It'll realize some of the other ones already exist after it runs through them, and they may not change, so it's going through and assembling that database. Reloading unbound. All right, so everything's up to date. Now, let's go over here. Just go to standard NS lookup. We already know other domain servers are blocked. Make sure it's NS lookup working. It is, we can do that. And pornhub.com is just a single pixel. <laughs> so if we try to actually open the domain itself, back to the one by one pixel, that's that dot right there. So the site is blocked. And as simple as that. It's really a straightforward system to use. Uh, it can block lots of things on your network. The things you're kind of missing with this is granular controls, not as easy. It's blocking it at the DNS level for everything on a network. One way around it, you maybe want to block social and gambling and porn from everyone but yourself on the network. One of the ways around it was you, you could create a pass rule in the firewall so you can use an external DNS server, but everybody else and everything else has to use this DNS server. So that is kind of one way to do it. And uh, let me jump over here to the rules. 
LAN, you would just add a rule above this to say uh, allow DNS from this IP anywhere. So before it hits this rule, you'd add one rule above it, and let's just go ahead and make one. So if we duplicate this, let me look up the IP address of this machine real quick. So this is 40.101, 40.101, destination any. So if it comes from here, it can go out to DNS, apply changes, but if it's not coming from here, go ahead and block it. That's, that's a way you could say, I want to be able to use an external DNS server because I don't want to be falling under these filter rules. Like I said, compared to DNSing where you get more granular control in the list of the computers and things that are being done, less granular, but pretty cool and definitely gets the job done. Uh, we've used this for some of our clients, just general filtering uh, for the whole site because most of the time companies want company-wide filtering. You should be blocking a lot of the malware sites uh, in general, that's a great thing to do because there's no one who really wants a filter rule to say, well, let me have some malware on my computer. Uh, but hopefully this tutorial was helpful for getting you started with PF Blocker uh, and specifically the DNS blacklisting, pie hole lists and block domain. Um, it works really well. It really is a smooth sailing uh, system for once you get it set up and it provides that filtering without breaking the SSL man in the middle problem that uh, I always it was harping at at the beginning and things like that as well. Like I said, hopefully this is helpful. If it's kind of here, uh, like and subscribe. And if this is a helpful uh, thing for you or you have questions, leave them below, leave them in the comments below, or join our forums, and uh, we can go ahead and do that. Oh, in case you're wondering, it's what's pulling up here. If you're wondering where it does this, it does server include var unbound pf dnspl star conf. Uh, this is in the DNS resolver, so into services. Uh, DNS resolver, the default resolver. And uh, just so you kind of know the back end of how this works, it pulls and adds all the config files uh, just with an include file so, to append any settings you already have in DNS resolver. I uh, thought I'd mention that. All right, that's it. Have fun uh, setting this up and blocking things and uh, all that fun stuff. Thanks.